part six of our Sprite Kit tutorial. Uh, in this final part, we're going to do a multi-channel sound engine for our game. It's very simple. It sounds worse than it is. I'll take you through it step by step. We're going to be using the AV Audio Engine framework in order to do it. Uh, let's jump in. So I'm going to begin by creating a new class. We're just going to call it Effect. I'll add a sub uh, class to go with it called Sounds. Before I define my classes for effect and sounds, let me briefly discuss how I plan to use the AV Audio Engine. AV Audio Engine is composed mostly of nodes of three types. There are mixing nodes, processing nodes, and source nodes. We're going to use a source node that we load a WAV file from. The WAV file will play a sound effect, such as an explosion or a bullet shot. And that file will then be sent through the mixing engine in order to reach the system speakers. We can then attach that playing node to a processing node, modify the sound in transit on its way through the system bus, and then when it reaches the main mixer, it'll be changed slightly. So we have the opportunity to add echo, distortion, or in our case, pitch. So you'll see here that I'm using audio player node, audio pitch time unit, and I'm keeping track of an audio file in my class. The way my classes will be broken down is I will connect the player node to the pitch time node, and then I will connect the pitch time node to the main mixer. I can do this repeatedly, so this will become the basis of our multi-channel sound engine. We're going to create more than one effect class, and each one will represent a player node and an AV audio unit pitch time change, all connected in sequence. There will be an array of these effects there will be a single sound engine that we track in the sounds class. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, to round out my effect class, I'm going to define an audio buffer to store my WAV file's contents. I'm going to give this class a name, and I'm going to maintain a reference to the AV audio engine. I'm also going to set a bool to, set to say whether this class is play or not, and then we'll go ahead and break into the init. This init might fail. So if I cannot load the file for any reason, or I can't get like a format to work, we'll just return null. Because of that, I'm gonna have a do and a catch block. And if at any point I fail, I'm not gonna try to catch it and process it and save it. I'm just gonna break out, return null. We won't play the sound if there's an error. It's necessary to stop the sound node. And then I'm just going to assign some variables here. And then let's try and load that sound file. First thing we're going to need to do is grab a URL. The sound files are going to live inside of our bundle. So I'm going to access the bundles URL method that says path for resource of type weave. If you're going to use a different kind of resource, then make sure you match up. Don't copy me at my code. Exactly. Uh, you know, set it to MP3 if you're doing MP3. So I'm going to make a reference to this audio file for reading. And the try is necessary in case that file cannot be found. If it can be found and it can be open for reading, I'm going to try to read its contents into my audio buffer. So I'm going to use the PCM format. This is the standard Apple format for all of their sound buffers. And if I'm able to load it, I'm going to go ahead and read that in. So one is creating the sound buffer, allocating the memory, and then step two is to try to actually process the format. This could also fail, so that try is there in order to look out for formatting issues, corrupt data, that sort of thing during the read, bad disk even. If the, all of that goes correctly, I'm going to attach my player node and my pitch node to the engine, and then I'm going to connect the player node to the pitch node, and then I'm going to connect the pitch node to the main mixer. It sounds worse than it is. If you just follow along these formats, they're all very simple. There's many examples of this available on Apple's website. There's not a lot of variation to this. For playing sounds, this is simple enough. If at any point we weren't able to allocate that buffer, we're gonna go ahead and return nil. And then we're gonna define now a function that just says play. And the play function is going to take as input a pitch and a speed. And that is something we're going to feed to the pitch time node. 
first thing we got to do is check if that engine is running. If that engine is not an active engine, this is the first sound we're playing, for instance, it's time to reinitialize the engine graph and get it into the playing state. Then we're going to set our player node to the playing state as well. We'll modify the variables that we received on the pitch time engine. So the pitch time processing node, I should say. We'll assign the pitch and the speed, and then the buffer that we loaded our sound effect into, we're going to schedule that to play. When that pl finishes playing, we'll set ourselves our playing variable to false, and then we'll just launch in immediately with the playing variable equals true. Then we're done with that class. Now the sounds class, there will just be a single one of these. This will be a singleton. We'll assign our engine, then we'll create an array of effects, and then we'll create a, uh, a method that we're going to call get effect. And what this will do is it will look through our effect array and it will find a matching name that is also not currently playing on a node. In order to do that, I'm going to use the where predicate and I'm going to use a method that I'm going to call is ready to determine if a channel or effect is available for playing. Uh, define that after this method. So I'll do that next in just a moment. Bear with me on that. So if we can find an existing effect, we're going to use it. And if we cannot, we're going to create a brand new one. So we'll give it a name and we'll give it an engine reference. And then we'll append it to the array for next time. So we might pull this out of the array in a future uh, pass through this function. Then we'll return that effect. And if it, for any reason we can't, we'll return nil. And, and there's a mistake here. We cannot return nil without putting an optional on that. That's my bad. Okay, so let's define that is ready. Is ready takes an effect instance in as a parameter, and then I'll grab the name as well, and then we'll return true or false if this effect is ready to play something. In order for that to be the case, the buffer that we would have loaded would have had to have the same name and the playing has to be false. Next, I'll define a utility function to preload my buffer into RAM. I'll just call it preload. And all this is going to do is fill that array. So we'll call get effect. We don't care what the result is. And then that will fill our array with a memory buffer if we pass in a name of something that's in our bundle. I'm going to make a generic play function here. And what the play function will do is it will go and get an available effect channel and it will play, and it just occurred to me we need to include the pitch and the speed. So we'll do that, we'll define that. So pass that in, we'll call effect.play in order to make that happen. And if we cannot pull it from the array, we just won't play anything. Now I'll make utility functions that play it with the default speed and default pitch so that you don't have to pass those parameters every single time you call something. So default pitch is zero, default speed is one, as in 100%. I'll also make some utility functions that just do only pitch. So we'll do that. So default speed, but with just a higher pitch. And we'll copy and paste that, and we'll do it again with just a different speed. So default pitch, but modify speed. There we go. Last but not least, in order to dispose of those sounds that we've been loading into RAM, so between levels, for instance, if you guys need to dispose of your resources, just set that to a new array, and the garbage collector will grab it up. Now that we've done that, it's back to gameplay C. So it's time to define in a, our class that sounds singleton, and I'm also going to make an array of pitches. Pitches are defined in, in uh, multiples of 100, in order for them to affect the processing node. So for instance, each 100 represents a semitone. And if you do six semitones, you'll be about a half octave up. And so that's about as far as I wanna go. It'll sound ridiculous if I go too far. And I'll pick a random one from that array in order to modify any sound that I'm playing that, you know, where I want that. So let's go where we need to preload these sounds. It's time to do that. I don't have any sounds though, so let's grab them up. I'm going to use free sound, and if you do a search for 8-bit sound effects library like I'm doing here, if you roll through, you'll see 
There's an 8-bit sound effects library by Little Robot Sound Factory. So that's how you know you've got the right one. You can go through here and test any of these if you would like to. Pick whatever sound makes the most sense for you, so you can see which ones I'm grabbing. So I've downloaded a couple of sounds, one shooting, one exploding. I've just named them shoot and explode one. Might do explode two, three, four if you want some variation, but one is good for me. So I'm going to preload shoot, and I'm going to preload explode one. That's pretty easy, right? So now that I've got them loaded, I can play them when I'm the alien is shooting. So if I modify the shooting block, I'll do sounds.play, shoot, and then I'll pass in a pitch variable, and I'll use my pitches array, and I'll pick something random from this. So just grab random element. So one of those six possible uh, semitones that we used, and then we'll go ahead as well where we're going to explode the player or the alien. Or, oh, sorry, we're going to explode the alien. There we go. So it's aliens will explode. We'll use the explode one sound. Again, we'll change the pitch slightly. So when lots of explosions happen at once, they'll all be at a slightly different pitch. That way you can get a little bit more mileage out of that asset. So you don't need like 12 different sounds if they're all very similar. Just tweak the pitch a little bit when you call the play command. So when the player uh, shoots, we'll do the shoot sound. And when the player explodes, so under explode player, we'll check if the game is over and we'll play it one of two different ways. So if the game is over, we'll play explode one, but we'll slow it down. So we'll do 0 0.25, 25% speed. Otherwise, when the player blows up, we'll play it explode one sound, but we'll play it at 50% speed, 0.5. There we go. Let's test it out. like the way that those sounds are going so i think we're done here uh that was a very fast one as tutorials go honestly the sounds are not that bad so we're gonna go from here a tutorial's done what would you do next well there's a lot of code smells in this tutorial that you could fix you could optimize the code in a million ways you could add additional enemies you could add in between rounds you could add a high score you could do all kinds of things but i think you get the idea of like how we solve problems uh, when you're making something in Sprite Kit, you're just going to make a, usually, you're going to make a different class of Sprite. So experiment with that. Let me know what you think. I appreciate it if you uh, like and subscribe to the channel. It always helps me. And if there's anything going on, just drop me an email or leave a comment below, and I'll uh, be sure to look out for that. Thanks for watching this series. I really appreciate it.